Happy to say the Mini started a lot easier this time, so just pushing things up and down. And that enabled us to take the plane out and uh, turn it around, so hopefully that's the last time I've had to swap it around. The idea being I can finish off a few jobs at this end. Up till now I've left the main tank off. Uh, one of the reasons being because it's been easy to get around everything. And also, at some stage, I've got to replace these ferrules. I've got some different ones that they want me to use, so I was leaving it off so that they could be swapped when we got down to the airfield. Uh, we sort of discussed rigging up a bit of a system just to feed the bottom tank for running in. But I'm sort of figuring that if I put this on here, it will um, just test my theory on a few more things that needed to go on. And also there's a lot less potential danger in damaging the tank if it's actually bolted to the uh, aircraft. So that's what I'm going to do tonight. I think to get it on there, I've just got to drop this arm off. So it's going to take two of us just to release this down so I can just move it out of the way temporarily. Slip the tank in and then just fix this, fix this all back up again. This arrived today, this parcel, to replace this piece of silicon pipe which was on the breather that I didn't like the look of. I've ordered this instead. So this is some uh, nylon braided uh, coolant, fuel hose, uh, rubber pipe uh, to replace this one. Um, price of this was about £7 and I bought these finishing caps as well to go over the end just to tidy up the braid. I thought I'd try this, I just can't bring myself to pay £47 with uh, the delivery for a piece of uh, Rotax pipe that's that long and that diameter. I know it'll work first time and uh, it is the proper stuff but it just seems such a lot of money so We'll give this a go before I uh, have to put my hand deep into my pocket and stump up for the Rotax one. And there we have it, it's nice and snug at this end. Then at the other end the, uh, the tap off the uh, cylinder head is a tiny little bit smaller than it is on this end. But that's definitely gripped it a lot better than the um, silicon pipe did. And this braided nylon stuff as far as uh, toughness, it did have to take some cutting as well, so I think that's going to press, protect it nicely. So we'll see how that looks. So I've got my air filter oil, there's my air filter, and uh, now we're going to oil it up, ready to go on the aircraft. And there we have the new oiled up KNN air filter added, and I've just dropped a couple of tiny little holes, I don't know whether you can see them, but there and there so that I can pass some lock wire through and just lock wire the uh, air filter onto the holes in the carbs that are just on here. Just in case, make sure it doesn't disappear the, through the prop if it were to ever come loose. And also speaking of oils, this is the two stroke uh, oil that I've had recommended. So the time has come to put some in the tank and get that ready for uh, the running in phase. Here we go. There we have it, one litre of fuel in the oil tank. Hopefully, when I check my um, electrics next time, my blue flashy oil warning light will no longer be lit. So, that's that done. Antifreeze next. I've just got to try and work out what the best antifreeze is to use. And uh, we'll get the radiators topped up. Okay, so it's nine days till I'm due to take the aircraft down to the airfield to run it in. And um, a bit of snag. The propeller, I'm just sort of cleaning things up, ready to go back on to the um, output shaft. However, this is the shaft on the old 532. The flange is a little bit smaller, but what you can see is the, um, the threaded holes on the flange have been drilled out uh, because it's advised that the bolts that go through also goes straight through the flange and the nuts go on the back and you torque these up to 10 foot pounds and that clamps the propeller on because there's a problem with early versions of these where the flange was threaded you'd screw that in and then you tighten up the nut but in actual fact that could remain quite loose and the propeller not be tightened up very well 
However, brand new gearbox, brand new flange, and a brand new flange has got threaded holes. Damn it. Which means I'm going to have to take this off, I believe, which means I've got to drain the gearbox again, strip this down, take the output shaft out, and then I've got to find somebody um, who can mill these out because I've been advised by the chaps on the forum that this is toughened and normal twist bits make elongated holes and they advise that uh, these holes are actually milled out. So I've got nine days to find somebody who can do that and then get this bolted back on and get the prop on and then get it all loaded in the trailer. It's looking pretty unlikely because I haven't got a clue where I can get this done. Damn it. So there's been a fair bit of activity since that uh, last bit of filming was done. Um, I had a bit of fun and games with my propeller flange being a brand new gearbox. I realised that the propeller flange needed drilling. So with a couple of days to go till I was due to take the plane down to the airfield for the running in, I had to strip the gearbox, took the back end off. Mike Parry, a good friend of mine, from uh, working on minis recommended a, a local engineering company who could drill the flange and it was drilled out to accept the bolts um, that go through and hold on the propeller because there's a bit of a mod that needed to be done there so we raced around and got that done and there was a few other little bits and pieces to sort out a bit of gluing on the mid wing get some of this fabric put back up, back up together and general tidying up and getting everything back on the aircraft ready for the running in. It was all loaded back into the trailer and uh, we towed it down to Old Sarah. Leaving on the Friday night, the weather wasn't looking too promising, but we set off. We took our van down so we could stay overnight. And when we got up the next morning, it was cold and clear and crisp at Old Sarah. Quick brew and a fire and we were ready to go. I was joined by Glenn who kindly offered to give me a hand with the running in phase and uh, moving things around because it's quite difficult for me on my own. Um, his shadow sat in the uh, hangar at Old Serum along with Jigor for a good four years as well so it's nice that Glenn's just got his back in the air after 10 years and uh, we were looking forward to a day of getting mine running and uh, seeing how well this new engine performed. However it wasn't to be because I was beaten by the cold temperatures and a weak battery. So Glenn went for a fly just to make the most of the day and uh, here's a quick clip of his landing. I think he did pretty good. Whilst Glenn was flying I charged the battery but it still wouldn't turn the engine over fast enough to get things started. We also checked the weather and things were looking really grim for Sunday. So bad we decided to pack up and head on home. And this is what we were greeted with when we arrived. So with this sort of weather everything was abandoned down at the airfield, the plane and the uh, camper van and we had to go down the following week to pick everything up once the snow had thawed. The kids enjoyed it and it lasted a couple of days. So the following Saturday morning we drove down and it was like a spring morning at Old Sarum. But we spent the time and packed everything back up. Had the little man with us. He enjoyed a good look round the hangar. And in the sunshine we brought it all back. So as you can tell things haven't quite gone to plan. Um, the engine hasn't been run. Uh, the weakened battery has been put on charge so I'm yet to find out whether it's the temperature down there or whether it is a bit of a duff battery so time for a little bit of deliberation I'm going to modify the battery box so that's easier to take on and off and uh, I've now got to find somewhere where I can run it up um, I don't really want to drag it down towards Serum for the running in phase again um, unless I'm sure that it's going to turn over and run so I think I'm going to try and find a more local airfield or a piece of land where I can just give it a go and see if it will run. 
So if anybody can suggest something a little bit closer to Worcester, I'll be glad to hear of it. And uh, I never showed you this. Alan sent me this. He's made me this uh, cup for having a brew whilst I'm in the workshop. Looks brilliant. So I've been enjoying many a brew with that. And uh, he also said if anybody else fancies one, uh, to drop me some details and I'll put you in touch. So, cheers for that. That's cheered me up knowing.